Hey guys, we are taking a look at another Marvel Legends Infinity War slash Thanos Wave action figure. We have got the second figure that I've gotten a hold of so far, and that's only because I have no self-control, and when I had him in hand, I just had to buy him, despite the fact that I was actually kind of on the fence about him. So today we're taking a look at, well, it says Serpent Society, but it's King Cobra. Uh, I really don't know why they put that. I mean, probably trademark licensing reasons, I would assume. Uh, King Cobra is kind of a generic name. I'm sure somebody has the rights to it or something. But we've got him in that uh, big window packaging. We've got a shot of him on the side with some artwork. And then the back has actual product shots, the lineup, and our Build-A-Figure. So let's pull him out. All right, guys, so here he is out of the package. King Cobra or Cobra or Klaus Voorhees or whatever you want to call him because he does have a lot of aliases. And this is a figure that I was interested in because he is a striking figure in terms of his look, but I don't really have any attachment to the character. It's also another instance of a kind of what you see is what you get type figure where there's no accessories unless you count the bath piece and... And you know I don't do that. So let's go ahead and take a look at articulation and then we'll do paint and sculpt. So the head can swivel and he has a little bit of up and down movement, not a lot. He does have this hood and the cape in the way. So as you might expect, that is definitely gonna play a role there. The arms can go out. They can rotate all the way around, but the cape is gonna get in the way, the shoulder pads and the joints are ratcheted and they're very, very solid ratchets. So I'm not, I'm not against that. I actually kind of like ratchet joints. Uh, they definitely help with posing. So we've got bicep swivel, double jointed elbow. We've got hinged and rotating wrists. So nothing, nothing special there. We've got a crunch. He can go back one and forward one, basically. The cape is going to make it a little difficult to actually do that from time to time. Waist twist. Legs can go out about that far. They can only kick like just around 90 degrees. He's got pretty limited kick there. Uh, we can go back just a bit. Thigh cut, which this scale armor uh, really hides that joint really well. Double jointed knees. We've got a boot cut and we've got hinged and rocker ankles. So it's all the, the normal Marvel Legends articulation that you've come to kind of love or hate maybe. Uh, my only real gripe on articulation isn't necessarily a problem with anything moving incorrectly or not moving correctly. Uh, it's that this character is supposed to be incredibly... Um, kind of uh, pliable and elastic. He is, uh, he's very much snake-like and that's that's kind of what, he, what he's got. It's like an, 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 an elasticity kind of thing going for him. And I was really hoping, I knew, obviously I knew going into this figure that he didn't have it, uh, is that he would have had butterfly joints. I think he would have uh, lived up a little more to his flexibility type nature to be able to have a little more additional movement here because of that added joint. And he also has really restrictive legs too. So it's just kind of odd. It doesn't really, you know, kill the figure for me, but I figure that a character that is so flexible, so pliable, so elastic, as they say, should be able to move a little bit better. Now, as far as his overall look and appearance, paint, sculpt, that whole deal, there is a decent amount of parts reuse here. Uh, the majority of this figure is the same kind of body that we got with the Green Goblin figure. Uh, I believe the torso and the crotch are the same, the legs and the arms are the same. I don't know where the hands or these gauntlets come from. I'm not sure if these are new or not. I thought these hands were the same thing that the Prowler figure from the uh, recent Lizard Wave had. They're actually different. They're not the same. Uh, once I got them side by side, I could realize that they were in fact quite different. And then we have this big uh, cobra hood type cape, which I, I actually like. It is a huge, slightly rigid piece of plastic, so it does kind of get in the way. But I like it uh, in terms of design. It's got that kind of marbly metallic type plastic used, and you can see the braiding that goes through it, along with the ribbing on the back that looks like the inside of a cobra's hood. So I really do like that. And then, of course, he has his hood, which mimics that same type of design. He's got the cobra on the top. And the actual head sculpt for this figure, I think, is really, really nice. It is very, very strikingly similar to his comic look. Uh, very, very happy with it. I think it looks very much the part of this character. He looks very sinister, very evil. He does have that metallic gold, gold metallic green uh, plastic that they use to cast, and then the face is uh, all the smaller details, including the skin, are painted on. Now, beyond the paint on the face, which is quite clean, the only real paint that I've been able to see is uh, the cobra-type emblem that's on his chest. Everything else seems to be molded. 
uh, everything from the greens to the purples and then down to the uh, the darker color on the boots. I'm not sure where these come from. They're kind of the standard legends, just normal boots. And then he's got this free-floating uh, belt piece here, which is just cast in the same kind of uh, gunmetal gray as his bracers or, or gauntlets. So in terms of his overall look, uh, I think it's actually very, very nice. You know, I'm, I don't have a whole lot of attachment to this character, like I said. I do know where he comes from. I'm familiar with him in the comics. Uh, but I, I've never cared too much about the Serpent Society or Serpent Squad or, or really any of the, the lesser snake-type villains that exist in the Marvel Universe. But this particular character uh, kind of does something for me. I think it's it ultimately comes down to the metallic colors that they used and then at the same time he very much does look exactly al almost exactly i'll say like his comic counterpart that face likeness is uh is really really good i think they absolutely nailed the overall design and the reuse of green uh green goblin parts work perfectly here because he's a snake they look like snake scales i can't really fault him for doing that so at the end of the day, this is a pretty decent figure. Like I said, he's one of those what you see is what you get type figures. He doesn't really have anything extra, but at the same time, he doesn't really need it either because he's one of those figures that just relies on his overall uh, powers to do his work for him. That said, I do wish that they would have given him maybe a little bit different articulation scheme. I feel like he is a little bit restrictive based on his power set. Because, like, again, he's supposed to be very flexible, very pliable, and he doesn't have some of that extra articulation that I'd like to see with butterfly joints or things of that nature. But it's not a huge detriment to the figure. It's just kind of a nitpicky thing that I personally would have liked to have seen. So, overall, I like him. I think he looks pretty cool, and he's uh, he's got a striking color scheme, which, as usual, is something that I look for in my figures especially comic figures. So that's going to do it for this look at the Marvel Legends King Cobra figure from Hasbro. Thanks for watching, guys. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.